Welcome back to Switch Corner. It's time for our weekly look at what's coming up in the next week and what you should think about maybe adding to your collection or at least, you know, your wish list. Here I will say I don't cover every single game. I skip the shovelware and I basically focus on what's catching my eye, breaking it down by either day one by waiting on refuse or just very occasionally, like, I'm just curious to see what it has to offer. So with that look, hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we all do here. Join our growing family and let's get started. First up then this week we've got a game by the name of Sesonide, or at least that's my guess at the pronunciation. Let me know if you think it's said some other way though, because I have about five ideas at this point just rattling through my head. Advertising itself though is basically a ultimate homage to arcade twin stick shooters of yesteryear. I am in and I am a day one buyer with this one as it's channeling like 8-bit influences. Normally I will say this probably wouldn't catch my eye, but this one is actually coming from Triple Air Games. They are the studio behind a fantastic isometric adventure called Lumo and that actually released on the Switch now a couple of years back. Here though we do seem to get a whole lot of content with it advertising 50 plus challenging rooms, 6 power ups and then a bonus arcade game by the name of Yugatron probably pronouncing that one wrong too. It does though remind me like Game Boy games of the past and it's coming in with a huge day one discount of 50% off. Hopefully this monster discount is not a hint at its quality. They did good with Lumo though, so I am more than willing to give them the benefit of the doubt here. So here's a weird one, Halheim Hassel. This is a puzzle platformer with a twist. The twist being our character can essentially like detach and combine limbs to solve puzzles. Basically you're a Viking who's terrified of death and then well you end up dying and now you must negotiate your release from this place by completing tasks for a character by the name of Pesto. Sounds weird and that is not surprising because it's coming from developers perfectly paranormal. They released a game by the name of Manuel Samuel and I gotta say it wasn't perfect but it was decent and he had a great sense of humour so that's enough to persuade me to take a look at this one. With some beautifully looking like hand drawn visuals though I gotta say this one looks like it could be a very solid game. I'm trying just to now like work out where the humour will land as the trailer appears to have like a whole lot of characters vomiting all around you so it may be like very like South Park-esque. 14 levels, 90 puzzles, and then maybe most impressively, 3,700 like lines of spoken dialogue from 24 actors. I've got to say here though, look, I'm not day one on this one, but I could be. I want to see how like a few refuse turn out first, because I'm always down for something a little bit different, and this adventure seems like it very much could have that. So next up then, I'd say one of the big ones for me of the week, Phenotopia Awakening. This one I've already been playing, and I can't say anything just yet about it, but I will have a refuse come release release day. This one is essentially a 2D RPG adventure that throws in some like action RPG style combat and platforming for good measure. Here though you're going to be joining a hero by the name of Gale where one night a starship basically appears and abducts all the adults. As the oldest remaining villager it's your job to set out and you know solve this mystery. Expect to hear over 50 different enemy types, 12 boss encounters, a 60 song soundtrack, achievements to unlock and then a campaign that they're actually advertising can last anywhere from 25 hours to 50, basically dependent if you're a completionist and you want to work through all the side quests. I'm really looking forward to sharing my review on this one come the end of the week, so do keep an eye out for that and hit subscribe to be notified the second the review drops. All right, so I'd be lying if I said I wasn't excited for this one, but Peaky Blinders Mastermind. This one is coming from publishers Curve Digital, who released recently Narcos Rise of the Cartels. I honestly didn't think that was as like awful as everyone felt, but a lot better genre entries have released since then on the console like XCOM 2. That said, though I may live in America now, Peaky Blinders is set in my hometown of Birmingham, so I feel a responsibility as a Brummie to just go ahead and pick this one up. It's also probably like our most famous export at this point, right behind Black Sabbath, uh, maybe Duran Duran 2. This one though, it's taking place right before season one, and I guess that means they're gonna be reintroducing characters, so that's gonna be good for fans and those that know very little about the show alike. It looks interesting though, all the locations from the show, and then actually this one, weirdly, it's actually an isometric puzzle game. I thought it was gonna be turn-based strategy, but it looks like they've simply taken influence from the strategy genre and the stealth genre and kind of thrown it together with puzzles. Nothing on the cards yet with this one though, sadly, regarding a review. I would love to put a review out there, 
but there is no like promises just yet. I am a day one buyer though. Most of you I will say should probably wait for a refuse first, but it is priced pretty nicely, so I'll take the risk. So I'd be lying if I said this next game looked good in the traditional sense, but Quaidon Asuma Mana Story has me curious for sure. This has supposedly been in development for nine years now, and by the visuals I honestly probably would have guessed that. With that said though, like something about it looks interesting to me and I'm not really sure why, it's kind of combining 3D horror action with point and click adventure. It's a weird combo but basically you explore this like old Japanese manor that's rigged with like all sorts of traps, puzzles and then of course what appears to be demons. I think what's hooking me here is it kind of looks like a cell shady build of old school like Tenchu. Inspired by games of the early 2000s though, I really don't know what to expect and I'm kind of hoping here for like a cult classic. At this price though, I know one thing, I'm not day one. I'm gonna wait on a few reviews first and see how this one goes. I'm curious to see if it's, you know, loved, hated or completely splitting the audience. All right, so clearly a Hollow Knight knockoff right now, but Gleamlight and with the wait we've had for Silksong at this point, I'm more than happy just to play a ripoff, honestly. If it can capture like 10% of the magic that Hollow Knight brought to the table, then this could be absolutely solid. Coming from D3, their back catalog can best be described as like hit or miss, but I can't deny here. Immediately the visuals with this one just kind of grabbed me. That's really all you can base this one on too right now because it's all kind of very mysterious in its advertising. It's, it's talking about like an unspoken story that the player will need to piece together through your adventure. With the stained glass like world though and a promise of no user interface or overlays on screen, I'm curious to see how this one just kind of works and if it can stand amongst the greats. I'm going to be a day one buyer here. I am kind of judging a book by its cover honestly, but I really do like what I've seen so far. All right, so you thought the other games look weird in this list visually, try Paratopic on for size. This horror adventure doesn't sell itself on the eShop with its art, that is for sure, but it is actually highly regarded thanks to a release on PC around 2018. It will be very easy to kind of mislabel this one as shovelware, but yeah, Refuse are up there just kind of praising it all over the place. Story here though, and I've got to say I have absolutely no idea. I'm reading this bit straight from the eShop. You got caught smuggling VHS tapes across the border, and now there's basically how to pay. You want to find an elusive rare bird in the forest and snap its picture. You have to kill a man in the back room of a shady diner. Rarely do I read a plotline that makes me feel more confused than when I started at the beginning. If you can translate what any of this means though, please do in the comments below. Look, it's super cheap and it seems to have awards just all over the place from best game to best soundtrack. On soundtrack actually, it even offers over an hour of music, which is strange when you factor in the fact it can be beaten in 45 minutes. It seems we're gonna have more than a few reasons though to go back and revisit it. I'm gonna go day one on this one. They've spiked my curiosity for sure. There's just no doubt about that. All right, so our final three games of the week, then kicking it off with Even the Ocean. I'll tell you immediately, I'm waiting on Refuse for this one, but it looks unique, kind of combining what appears to be Metroidvania style 2D platforming with almost like old school story moments, like almost think visual novel. I'll be honest, I know very little about this, but its idea sounds very cool. You're a power plant technician who's out to save the city after a maintenance event just turns the world upside down and you're now out against like this unknown menace. You'll be using those light and dark abilities and it seems to have multiple difficulty options as well as different ways to play thanks to what is like a purely gameplay mode and then a story mode. And that's why I think this one may border on like old school visual novel because they're basically giving you an option to cut them out. I will say though that is purely an absolute guess on my part. So while we're on visual novels then our penultimate game of the week Aokana Four Rhythms Across the Blue. I've been doing a little digging into this one and from what I can tell it is purely visual novel meaning a whole lot of reading with the occasional decision to make and yeah very little else. Basically it is for visual novel fans only and no one else, it's not going to try anything new. With the usual multiple paths to go through though, romance, some nice animations and then a lengthy soundtrack and gallery to explore, this could be decent if the storyline delivers. Normally like nearly every visual novel I talk about I'd be wait for refuse but this one there's actually going to be a good chance I'll drop a review just before release because the story absolutely like intrigues me. Here we get a world where people basically freely fly through the air thanks to what are anti-gravity shoes and you all take part in some sort of race. It's a weird one but I'm interested to see how deep this storyline gets. 
So our last game of the week then, Samurai Jack Battle Through Time, the now classic animated TV series. Here though it seems like they are doing the source material absolute justice as it tells a story that's never been told before while tying it all into the series finale. Looks stunning visually, they've brought back the original cast for the face work and it seems they are promising a whole lot of like weapons to experiment with as well as skills and you know levels to upgrade. I'm down with a day one purchase on this one though and I can't wait to set out and try and stop Aku's evil reign. If it plays anywhere near as good as the trailer looks then we should be in for a good time. I'm just quietly confident in this one as it's coming from Adult Swim Games and they've put out some really solid work. And that is it for the week, is there anything I missed that I should be you know adding to my list or is there any you know must buys that you can't wait to pick up? A quick shout out then to the patrons of the channel, they're just going above and beyond to support Switch Corner, it truly is appreciated and helps honestly more than you know. If you'd like to check that out for yourself it is linked in the video description though, down below. With that hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we all do here, join our growing family as we quickly make our way towards 11,000 subscribers and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.